Okay, common question, how much wind can you train in? Well, a lot of that depends on the instructor, the skill, the knowledge, um, and the gear that they have. So at super training, when you have the best skills in the world and the best instruction and the gear, we can train in anything from zero wind up to about 35 mile an hour winds. Now, most people out there are very, very limited because even the instructor doesn't have most basic skills at all. So they can't control the glider in higher winds and they don't have the proper gear to be able to deal with all sorts of different wind conditions. But at Super Training, we've got over 50 different gliders and every different size clear down to eight square meter. So if you've got higher winds, you can always, you know, put the students on a smaller size. And when you learn the correct skills, you can deal with very, very high winds, even 35 miles an hour, which you can see from our, a lot of our videos with brand new students in up to 35 mile an hour winds. No problem when you have the right gear and the right instruction. So a huge part of that, of course, is the gear. And a huge part of proper training is having the right gear. One of the most incredibly important things and reasons to have the best instructor in the world is just to pick which glider and more specifically which size of glider you specifically are on at your exact skill level in those conditions. If you don't have exactly the right size, you can't train properly. For example, if you're out there in say 10 mile an hour winds on a really small glider, you don't have enough loading to properly balance the weight of your body with the glider because the glider can't pick you up. So the glider should be sized accordingly. If you pull three inches of brake and you're getting drug, the glider's too big. You want it to where you're pulling about eight, 10 inches of brake to where you're getting drug. Uh, that's the proper size. If you pull the brakes and you don't get drug, you can't train properly because the most effective part of training is controlling the altitude of your butt using the glider. And if your glider's too small, it can't physically lift you, so you simply can't practice at all. So trying to practice in some place in five, seven mile an hour winds, you can practice some things in those conditions, which like at super training, if we have zero to five mile an hour winds, we'll be practicing very different things. But the vast majority and the most important training is where you get from say nine, 10 mile an hour winds up to 35 mile an hour winds, where the glider can control and carry the weight of your body. That's the most critical thing. If you can control the angle of your body using the lift from the glider and control the altitude of your butt, give or take one inch, the odds of you taking a collapse on the ground or in the sky are about as low as they're gonna get. If you can't do that, you really shouldn't be flying at all, period, because you don't have even the most basic control. So that's a good thing to look for if someone says they're an instructor, look for them kiting up a wall or kiting up a pole and because that is a demonstration of actual loading and directional control. Very, very critical that you learn that skill. If you don't have that skill, you're not flying the glider, the glider's flying you and you're merely telling it which way to go. So it's absolutely critical you've got an instructor that has the skills to teach because you can't teach what you don't know and they have to have a crap ton of gliders because every student for every weight for every skill level, for every different weather condition has to have a different glider. Otherwise, you're not training effectively. So, how much wind can you train in? There are many variables, but clear up to 35 mile an hour winds if you get super trained. How much wind can incompetent instructors train in? They can't, they'll never train you. It doesn't matter what they say. Oh, we gotta have seven, nine mile an hour winds. It, it, they don't even train in that because they're not putting you on the correct size to have the correct loading. You literally can't even practice real actual skills. All they're doing is having you stand lock-legged and yank left and right. And that doesn't teach you anything but how to tell the glider which way to turn. So there's a lot more to it than people realize. And it is absolutely critical that you, who wants to be the pilot, 
does your research and looks at actual skill. It's not about his word versus his word, it's about his skill versus his skill. Look at very specific skills. They either have it or they don't. Can your instructor kite up a pole and balance perfectly on one foot? If not, they can't train you because they don't have the skills, period. Look at their students. Either you're seeing their students kiting up a wall and standing on top and balancing themselves perfectly, or they can't. If they can't, they don't have real true control of the glider. So that is what you can do. Those are the conditions. Those are some of the variables and do it right. Do your research, compare skill against skill, logic, reason, facts, throw out all the BS and sales pitch and opinions because opinions don't mean diddly squat. The facts do and the skills do. Let's go flying.